Hello folks, this is Raj Sastri from Raja Option Trading. Today I want to talk about one of my favorite trading stocks. Uh, today is March 18th, 2021. The stock is Landsand. It's in the consumer cyclical. It's a specialty retail. And you know, most, most people I know, they buy clothes from Landsand. It's got very good uniform selection and very good, you know, winter wear, sweat, sweat, sweat pants, sweatshirt, you know, very good collection. So, you know, it's a good company overall, but this company has got a history of a uh, little bit, you know, trading wildly around earnings. So that's one of the reasons I like to trade this stock because, um, you know, it's very predictable when it comes to earnings. So with that, from a trend perspective, the global retail market is going to grow at a compounded annual growth of 9.4%. So with that, you know, this company is really, it's got some good strategy around omni-channel. Omni it's got e-commerce, which is growing. It's also, you know, growing within Kohl's and a couple of other stores. So overall, I feel, you know, it's got some good uh, tailwinds uh, to uh, grow in the future. And these are some images from, you know, the landsend.com. They seem to be doing pretty well when it comes to e-commerce. So with that, let's uh, look at the, you know, the profile of Landsend. You know, they're a multi-channel retailer. You know, they're into casual clothing, accessories, footwear, home products, and, you know, a lot of these uh, things. And, you know, they also do very well in the catalog, and they also do uniform. They work with multiple airlines and provide them clothing. It's overall a good story there. And stock price is $31, um, and market cap is, you know, $1.03 billion, which is uh, very low, it has a lot of room to grow. Um, and, you know, this company uh, just announced earnings, and after the earnings, stock uh, fell down by 18%, or about $7. So if, you know, 91% of the employees approve the CEO here, uh, Jerome Square Griffin, Griffith, and from a stock chart perspective, I feel, you know, it's a pretty nice looking chart. They've got some bumps along the way. These are good opportunities to buy. And then you can trade it when it goes up. And one thing I noticed is really coming up to this quarter, stock has run up so much. I felt like a, you know, pullback was in due. So, you know, I think, you know, that's what happened. Typically, when the stock runs up so much before the quarter, unless they do very, very well, stock typically, you know, comes down. So with that, you know, after the quarter, um, the revenue growth itself, now it's a negative 2%. They got good amount of cash and some debt. I think it's a manageable. Debt is a little bit higher, but they can manage it with the low interest rate. And they got, uh, you know, some um, operating cash and levered free cash, which is an overall okay type position here. And this uh, CEO here, Jerome, he's got good history um, in the retail industry. He has been working in uh, multiple places before. Uh, as you can see here, he was working with, uh, you know, Tom Taylor Holding, uh, some more retail, um, East Spirit as an example, and also, um, you know, many companies in the past. So he's got some good history when it comes to, you know, um, retail, including the Tommy Hill figure and Chumi. So I think overall he's a good leader here. And he also received a graduate undergrad in uh, Pennsylvania State. So overall, I think it, uh, you know, the CEO himself uh, checks out. And from a um, news perspective, you know, mainly today, Lanson stocks were trading higher after the earnings. Then finally, they, it came down 18%, mainly because the number was a little bit lower. Uh, market was expecting a little bit higher, but they came tad lower compared to last, uh, you know, last quarter or you know, um, you know, basically sequentially the past quarter, not sequential, the yearly last quarter, they came in a little lower. We'll go into earnings, you know, a little bit later, but mainly because of the earnings uh, um, decrease, uh, stock fell off too much. Let's go into a little more detail here and look at the earnings itself. So as you can see in the, in, in the historic earning here, 
um, you know, stock itself, you know, from a market cap, it's been steadily increasing after, um, you know, 731, you know, kind of went up um, and ran up so much, almost nearly doubled in uh, a quarter or so. Now, that's the reason for the pullback. And if you look at the revenue itself, you know, historically they've been uh, doing well when it comes to revenue surprise. You know, they've been surprising Wall Street and many times they got negative earnings also, as you can see here. And this time, I think uh, they did a 2% um, you know, lower. If you look at 131, 21 and 130, 21, 130, 21, they did 549 and now they did 538. So that's a 2% decrement and Wall Street did not like it, especially because stock, stock ran up so much. Um, and EPS perspective, they did a surprise, you know, by four cents, which is not too bad. And you know, their margin also, as you can see here, uh, decreased a little bit. It was it, it was thirty nine point eight one back in one thirty one. Now it's thirty nine point five. So that's one another, another reason Wall Street obviously looks for the gross margin increase. In this case, there is a little bit decrease in the gross margin. Otherwise, you know, overall uh, shares outstanding is kind of, you know, same, not too big a deal here. And also they they kind of projected the first quarter, uh, they, will, they, they will expect between 275 and 285. You know, basically they're expecting their e-commerce e growth uh, to increase. And if you look at their first quarter here, which is uh, 431, they did 217 last time <clears throat> now they're giving a you know better forecast for the first quarter uh, 2021 which is which is a good thing that shows they got confidence that's one of the reason i feel this dip right now is a you know it's a good opportunity to buy and you know they will really do well as uh, more and more airlines and more and more companies start buying the uniform the, from them they will do better so with that, let's go into um, quarterly earning itself. Um, you know, they kind of highlighted a couple of things. Looks like they're doing very well in, when it comes to e-commerce with their analytics. Uh, they grew 21% uh, for the year, 14% for the quarter. That's a goodness year. Their e-commerce business is really growing. And they also uh, talked about um, the Europe, e-commerce in Europe. All Europe also grew. Um, and main... Um, you know, call out is really the revenue um, decreased by 2% compared to, you know, same time last year. That's why stock, you know, came down drastically. And they also talked about some, uh, you know, issues along the American Airlines. Um, I think they had some, uh, you know, revenue uh, decrease because of that. Um, and overall, from a business outlook perspective, they're expecting good revenue growth mainly by global e-commerce business, which is a good story. So overall, I feel like even though they missed um, the current quarter, their outlook seems to be good. So this um, you know, um, stock decrease is a good opportunity to buy some more and then keep it from, go from there. Um, next, let's go into you know, a little more historic performance of this stock and what we can glean from it. Uh, this stock, as you can see here, um, you know, they had some missteps in the past. You know, they were doing pretty okay selling through catalogs in the past, but then, you know, it was got acquired by Sears and, you know, that, you know, kind of did a number on them. They did not do well uh, with Sears, but after they broke out from Sears and became independent, that's when stock started going up. So I feel like, you know, they got more room to grow. And they're also expanding within Kohl's and multiple other, uh, you know, stores, which is a good story. Um, then if you look at the monthly performance here, um, you know, if you watch closely, you know, they had a big dip here, came back, big dip, came back, dip, came back. You know, there's a pattern here. So I feel like, you know, this dip here is, again, same story. It's a, you know, it's a time to buy. And you can, you know, if you're a trader, you can trade it off in a quarter or two. You can make some, you know, good profit. 
And if you look at the weekly performance here, same story. Um, you know, you can see stocks selling off, bouncing back, selling off, bouncing back. Now there is a sell off. I'm sure it will bounce back again. And if you look at the daily performance again, today itself, you know, stock um, decreased by 18%. It's a huge drop. Uh, so I think it's a good opportunity to buy, you know, given it's a lower uh, price uh, stock. You could even buy the stock outright or you could buy a 70 delta call option, maybe around, say, 25 or so for, you know, say, six months out. As stock goes up, you can sell the call option or you can sell the stock. I feel like it's a good story. You know, all these opportunities hist historically have been good buying opportunities. Next, let's look at the calendar, you know, uh, monthly performance here. The way to read this chart is I got year 2021, 2020, 2019, and then I got yearly high, yearly low, um, and yearly performance itself. So as you can see here, stock did very well last three years, um, and um, you know, before that it was hit and miss, mostly miss. And if you look at the pattern here, um, you know, 2020, um, you know, they did not do well in March and uh, mainly because of COVID here. And same story, now also in March, they did not do well. This is around, you know, the earnings of January, uh, quarter ending January, you know, that shows up in the, you know, the actual announcement in March. So then if you look at August here, um, you know, August they did very bad, then they bounced off. So that's a pattern here, you know, whenever they sell off after the quarterly earnings, typically they bounce off after that. So I feel like this time it's no different. You know, they crashed, you know, you you could buy and trade it in a like quarter or two and make some good money here. So with that, if you look at the chart itself, um, like we talked about earlier, stock has ran up so much into the earnings. So it's due for a pullback. That's why you see the big candle here, 18% drop. And historically, if you look at this chart, you know, uh, earnings here, stock went up, earnings here, stock kind of traded sideways, and earnings here, stock went up a little bit. So his historically, you know, if a stock has run up so much, you know, before the earning, it typically dropped. Same story here, stock ran up so much before the earning, it dropped. So I feel like it's a, Nothing new for this stock, and it typically does this way. And if you look at the moving average itself, you know, this is the 50-day um, moving average, the red red line. It's still above 50-day moving average. So I feel like you know, it will kind of bounce off of this 50-day moving average. It might come down a little bit, maybe to 30, but it will bounce off. That's how I feel the stock will behave. And, you know, from a Implied wall, you know, it's a very low implied wall right now, especially after the earnings. It's a good time to even buy option if you want to buy a longer term option around thirty dollars. I mean, not even thirty, it's around twenty five dollars or so. No big deal. Or you can buy the stock outright. And if you look at the volume itself, you know, volume is kind of steadily going up. I think this will change tomorrow because. Uh, you know, today's volume will reflect tomorrow. You could see a little bit bump here. So, and chocolate money flow also, as you can see here, today it came down a little bit. Very typical. Whenever stock drops, you know, this typically comes down a little bit, but it will take, you know, it will go up again. You can observe here, same story, stock came down. Chocolate money flow also came down. Took a while to stabilize, then it went up. You know, kind of, you know, pattern will continue as you go forward also. That's why I feel this is a good opportunity to, you know, load up a little, little more and buy some land sand. And here is, uh, you know, some insider trading history. So it's uh, land sand again, um, LE. So LE, you know, insider trading history is really, um, you know, mainly you can see here, you know, Eddie Lambert. He's a, you know, previous ex-CEO of uh, Sears, as many of you might be knowing. He's a 10% owner. He had been selling this stock consistently. So I think it's, a, you know, no surprise here. Um, you know, he's ex-CEO you know, of uh, Sears, and he was unloading. The 
total amount is not huge it's a 139k 82k even the ceo here on 6 march you know he exercised some options i think it's a you know i think you know it's not too much at all so no big deal here no red flag um i would say you know we can ignore this pretty much i would think next you know what should you do now you know cs dropped so much um, what should you do i feel like you know hey you know um, mainly the stock dropped because the net revenue decreased by two percent and wall street freaked out uh, thinking hey what's going on here and also the gross margin also decreased a little bit so that's why so i feel like as uh, you know industries open up and um, you know american airlines and other airlines open up uh, and schools open up it's a good play for these guys they're omnichannel they can do well in e-commerce they can do well you know in stores also and you know one observation is land sent typically trades wildly around earnings i feel this time it's no different it will kind of you know uh, because stock has run up so much before the earnings it's due for a pullback so overall i feel market overreacted and i think it's a good buying opportunity um, uh, you know you can buy some and sell it off in a quarter or two so with that uh, happy trading and investing thank you very much